Hey, what's up, buddy? Welcome back to another Skyblock video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Berserker class and how to build the best set for you. But before we start, I just want to mention that I have a Discord server, so if you have any further questions about dungeons, there's a dedicated channel for it. Also, if you do enjoy this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, and if you want to see more Skyblock videos, hit that subscribe button. I am doing a face reveal if we hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Alright, let's not waste any time and start with the armor. For the armor, I will be mentioning multiple different armor setups depending on what point of the game you're in. The first armor is strong dragon armor or superior dragon armor, undungeonized. Since you are just getting into dungeons, you will not be able to just use any dungeon set because it will require a certain catacomb level. Therefore, you can use this to get started. Or of course, any other non-dungeon armor as long as you can reach catacomb 2. And speaking of catacomb 2, the second armor set is 3-4 Fierce Rotten Armor with Titanic Heavy Chestplate, which has a Catacomb 2 requirement. This armor has an okay amount of damage and effective HP if you are just getting started. The third armor set is Zombie Knight Armor. This armor gives a good amount of strength and has a decent amount of effective HP for surviving early to mid game floors. Compared to the Zombie Soldier, which is also a viable option, it gives more damage but less effective HP. Therefore, the Zombie Knight is better for damage but has a Catacomb 14 requirement. And the Zombie Soldier is better for effective HP but has a Catacomb 9 requirement. So basically, you'd end up using the Zombie Soldier before the Zombie Knight anyways. The fourth armor set is 3-4 Shadow Assassin armor with either Zombie Knight chestplate, Tier 9 Perfect chestplate, Werewolf chestplate, or Zombie Soldier chestplate. For the chestplate, it comes down to preference in terms of damage, price, and effective HP. The Zombie Soldier, Perfect chestplate, and the Werewolf chestplate are all the tanky ones, while the Zombie Knight focuses on damage. The fifth armor set is, well obviously, full Shadow Assassin armor. The Shadow Assassin requires 4 or 5 completion and gives decently high damage and effective HP. Although the reason why I did not suggest Shadow Assassin chestplate in the previous set because, for some, the Shadow Assassin chestplate can be expensive to buy. Anyways, something I want to mention though is that the Golden or the Diamond Head is also an option. But the Shadow Assassin helmet is better only for the set because the full set bonus is extremely good paired with the baby yeti until you reach catacomb 28 and that is because the bonus does not scale with your catacomb level unlike the heads just keep in mind that you will require to own the head for that specific floor or it will be useless therefore it can get expensive if you do a lot of floors just something to remember the sixth armor set is superior dragon dungeonized this armor is worse than the Shadow Assassin in terms of damage, but good amount of effective HP. It's not really recommended nowadays, but I did want to just mention it just in case you want to consider it. Just keep in mind that this armor no longer has a catacomb requirement. The seventh armor set is Diamond Head with Necron Armor, which requires for 7 completion. The Necron Armor is part of the Wither family that focuses on damage. This armor is pretty much the best armor in terms of damage that you can get in dungeons. Really good and used by most endgame players. The final armor set is Diamond Head with Frozen Blaze armor. You might be wondering, if I mention the best armor, why is this here? Well, the famous debate of Necron vs Frozen Blaze is back. There are a lot of pros and cons of using both sets and will take a whole video to just compare them. But overall, Frozen Blaze gives more effective HP and almost the same damage as Necron. But against mobs like Withers, Necron's effective HP is better because of the damage reduction from Withers each piece it gives. The reason why people are currently using it more is because of the bug that allows you to pet stack and gain a lot more damage. I won't be mentioning that because it is against the rules, but it will get patched soon, so don't bother going for that for that reason. My opinion is that the Frozen Blaze armor should only be considered if you are really high catacomb and master start it fully. But you will get pet locked because Blaze pet is what makes it good. In addition, with the recent talk about possibly making armor set that are obtained outside dungeons not work in dungeons, Frozen Blaze will be useless for dungeons. And that's it for the armor setup. Just remember that you're not required to use exactly what I'm showing you. You can experience and see what fits you best. Although I do want to mention a bonus armor piece to consider, which is the Maxa boots. These boots are also from the Wither family that focuses mainly on speed and requires for 7 completion. In terms of damage, the Necron boots will be better, but since speed is somewhat annoying for clearing, many players use Maxa boots for its speed. I would personally say it only uses at a higher stage in the game. 
Anyways, what reforges and ultimate enchant should you use? Well, for armor reforges, you put ancient and if you cannot afford that, you can use fierce. For ultimate enchant, you have two options, legion and last stand. Legion increases your stats and last stand increases your defense by a percentage when you are below 40% health. Clearly, the legion is better for berserkers but for those who are having surviving issues, last stand works too. Plus, with the recent last stand fix, it actually works. If legion 5 is too expensive, legion 3 works fine. Okay, so let's move to pet now. Finding the best pet for you can be difficult, but hopefully I'll help you decide. The first pet is Griffin. This pet is often used in early mid game for the ability that gives you strength and regeneration. Plus, you wouldn't need a legendary one since the uncommon or rare has the ability. The second pet is Megalodon. This pet gives you strength, magic find and ferocity as base stats and has the ability that increases your damage by a percentage based on the enemy's missing health. Also, if you have the legendary one, you can gain damage and speed on kill. Overall, this pet is a decent budget pet and an epic one is currently only 500k. The third pet is Tiger. This pet also gives you a decent amount of damage and ferocity as base stats. If you go for the legendary one, you'll also get the ability that allows you to deal extra percentage of damage to a mob if there are no mobs next to it. Overall, this is another mid-game pet that is really helpful for the ferocity it gives and fighting mini-bosses in the yellow room since there are no mobs around you. The fourth pet is Lion. This pet also gives you ferocity but only a maximum of 5. In comparison to Tiger, I would say Tiger is better because ferocity truly makes a difference and Lion doesn't give much. The fourth pet is Wither Skeleton. This pet gives strength, crit damage, crit chance, intelligence and defense as base stats and has the ability to take less damage from skeletons and do more damage to wither mobs. Especially for the floor 7 boss room, this pet would be very helpful and gives you that additional damage reduction. Although in some instances, the damage reduction from skeletons isn't enough, so you would need an effective HP pet. And speaking of effective HP pets, the 6th and 7th pet are Baby Yeti and Blue Whale. Baby Yeti gives you strength and intelligence as base stats and has the ability to give you defense depending on your strength. While Blue Whale gives you a good amount of HP and defense because of the ability that gives you 3 defense for every 20 health. Both are amazing effective HP pets but as a berserker you will have a lot of strength so a Baby Yeti is better. However, with the strength nerf that happened, not all builds have an insane amount of strength and there are some cases, but not many, where Blue Whale gives more effective HP. The only scenario I could think of where Baby Yeti is 100% better is if you have a Withered Flower Truth. The calculations are not hard so look at your setup and figure out what fits you best. Anyways, the 8th and 9th pets are Ender Dragon and the Golden Dragon. Both of these pets are clearly damaged pets, but they are very expensive. Golden Dragon has worse effective HP, intelligence and speed compared to the Ender Dragon in dungeons, but it does slightly more damage. Although Ender Dragon is cheaper than the Golden Dragon and better if you plan on doing the end content. Also keep in mind that you would need to keep a bill in your bank for the Golden Dragon to be even considered. Finally, the last pet is Blaze. This pet gives you intelligence and defense as base stats and has the abilities to upgrade Blaze armor stats up to 40% and double the effects of the hot potato box. Overall, this is the pet you need if you're going for a frozen Blaze armor. Let's move on to pet items. There's so many pet items and honestly it all comes down to preference, but here are the ones I recommend. Spooky Cupcake for an additional 30 strength and 20 speed. Tiger Plushie for 3-5 attack speed. Minus Relic for increased pet stats by 33% and Dwarf Turtle Shelmet for no knockback. The Minus Relic might not be the best option since for one it's very expensive and not that good. And anyways, most people end up using the Shelmet because the knockback in dungeons is one of the most annoying things. Anyways, let's talk about the weapons now. The weapons I'll be mentioning are Aspect of the Dragon, Zombie Soldier Cutlass, Adaptive Blade, Flower Truth, Livid Dagger, Soul Whip, Shadow Fury, Axe of the Shredded, Giant Sword, Valkyrie, and Terminator. The first weapon is Aspect of the Dragon. The undungeonized version of this weapon is usually used for the first time dungeon players and if you want to dungeonize it, it is quite good for early game but there are better weapons. The second weapon is Zombie Soldier Cutlass which has a Catacomb 5 requirement. This weapon is good for early game because it's very cheap, does an okay amount of damage and gives you 100% attack speed which is useful. Shouldn't be used for too long though. The third weapon is the Adaptive Blade which requires for 2 completion. This weapon is a decent early to mid game weapon, something to use before Flower Truth or Livid Dagger if you cannot afford it. 
It is still 1 million coins as of right now, but selling one is easy, so keep that in mind. Which brings us to the fourth weapon, which is the Flower Truth. This weapon does a good amount of damage and is very good for clearing with its ability to shoot a rose that ricochets between three enemies. The fifth weapon is Livid Dagger. This weapon is probably the most known weapon because of how good it is for DPS and has full attack speed. If you compare this to the Flower Truth, it does more melee damage, but the downside of the Livid Dagger is that it is worse for clearing. You can always combo both weapons, one to clear and one to DPS. The sixth weapon is the Saw Whip. Saw Whip is similar to the Flower Truth in terms of clearing. It casts a whip in an arc, dealing damage to everything it hits. It does a surprisingly decent amount of damage, requires no mana, and can lie steal while constantly spamming the ability. If you look at the Flower Truth, it takes 10% of your max mana each time you use it. Which means, even if you do have a lot of mana, it doesn't matter. You'll always run out of mana while clearing. At least that has been my experience with the Flower Truth. But I would still say Livid Dagger is still better for DPS, so this is mostly used for clearing. The seventh weapon is Shadow Fury. This weapon has an ability to rapidly teleport to five enemies and hit them. Now this has started quite a bit of a debate because it is better than the Livid Dagger in terms of damage. But Livid Dagger does more damage per second because of its attack speed. However, if you compare an attack speed talisman's Shadow Fury with a shaded talisman Livid Dagger, it's not even close to how much more damage Shadow Fury deals. So overall, the Shadow Fury is better than the Livid Dagger with the correct reforges, but if you are looking for something cheaper and still really good, you can use the Livid Dagger. Oh yeah, and you can use the Shadow Fury for sword swapping, but more information about it later. The eighth weapon is the Axe of the Shredded. This weapon has an ability that throws the axe dealing damage to all mobs in its path. First of all, damage wise, it's really good against zombies because it deals 250% more damage to them. But it is mostly used in certain situations only. For example, some rooms, clearing with this might be slower than the Flower Truth because zombies are not standing in a straight line. But for the Floor 6 boss room, this is where it shines. You can pretty much run around spanning the ability, and since each time the axe hits the enemy, counts as melee damage, you can life steal for that. Moving on. Another situation is sword swapping between the axe and another weapon by basically throwing the axe and switching to a different weapon before it hits the enemy. The weapons can be either one for all giant sword, one for all shadow fury, or a valkyrie for its ferocity. And speaking of, the ninth weapon is giant sword. So like I said, giant sword with a one for all is very helpful in sword swapping and single hit damage in dungeons because you can 5 star it. Although it is worth a lot of money, so... Usually a budget option would be a one for all Shadow Fury like I mentioned earlier. The tenth weapon is Valkyrie. As most of you might already know, the Valkyrie is part of the Necrons family where its primary focus is damage and ferocity, which is obviously what a Berserker goes for. Overall, it's really good for clearing when you can add all the scrolls, does an insane amount of damage and very helpful for the Axe of the Shredder swapping with its ferocity. The final weapon is Terminator. As many of you already know, Terminator is not really a berserker weapon, but since it does an insane amount of damage and shoots 3 arrows at a time, it makes up for it. In addition, in master mode, a Valkyrie is just not enough for clearing and the mobs do a lot of damage to you, so the Terminator is very helpful there because you can still do damage, but from a long distance, while clearing really fast. Don't get me wrong, the Valkyrie plus the Axe of the Shredded Swapping does more damage than the Terminator, but it is harder to use and less effective in Master Mode. In addition, I do want to mention that the Juju Short Bow should not be considered if you play Berserker. Terminator gets away with it because it's insane, but the Juju only shoots one arrow, and so many other weapons are better. Anyways, that sums up the weapons. Hopefully I was able to help you decide on which one to use. Now for its reforges. For damage, go Fabled. Withered also works since Withered gives strength which increases your effective HP if you have a baby yeti, but for damage, Fabled is better. If you want an attack speed build which can work with an Axe of the Shredded and Valkyrie swapping, go for Dirty. Next up we have the helpful items. The first and most important item is Ice Spray. This weapon is expensive but it's actually really helpful for killing fast mobs like Shadow Assassins because it has an ability where it freezes mobs for 5 seconds giving you time to do as much damage as possible. The second item is the Wand of Atonement. This one heals you for 170 HP per second for 7 seconds. If it's too expensive, you can use the downgraded ones as well. The third item is Florid or Ornate Zombie Sword. The Florid Zombie Sword is the upgraded version of the Ornate Sword and has a good healing ability where it heals you for 168 HP plus 5% of your total health. The fourth item is Plasma Flux, Overflux or Mana Flux. 
The Plasma Flux is the upgraded version of the Overflux, and they all give you more strength and increases your region. The fifth item is Gloomlock Grimoire. This item has an ability where it heals you for 40% with overflow mana. Personally, this item is better than the Florid Zombie Sword, but it is quite expensive, so if you find Florid to be good enough, there is no need to upgrade. Just remember that it consumes a lot of soul flow over time and lowers your damage after you use it. The sixth item is Gyro Wand. This item has two abilities. The left click ability creates a rift at the targeted locations, 8 blocks in radius, and all mobs in the rift gets pulled to the center for 4 seconds. The right click ability applies the aligned effect to 4 nearby players and yourself for 6 seconds. What align does is that it splits incoming damage evenly between all aligned players. Overall, this item is very helpful for killing mini bosses and clearing rooms with its left click ability. In addition, very helpful and necessary for Master Mode 6. But of course, mages won't be in master mode unless you're really high catacomb. The seventh item is Wither Cloak Sword. This weapon is mostly used for its ability where it spawns a veil around you, giving you immunity from all damage. This is probably the most underrated ability in the game. It is extremely helpful for blocking damage that you know is about to come. For example, when countering a shadow assassin. In addition, helpful for phase three of the floor seven boss room when jumping on the lava. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video took me a long time to make, so I appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more Skyblock videos, hit that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot. If we hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the year, I will be doing a face reveal. So anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.